Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the Bohr model. Now so far we have talked about the atom, the structure of the atom, so we know that it's got the nucleus with the protons and the neutrons in the um, middle of the atom, so the nucleus of the atom, and then of course we have those negatively charged electrons in the electron cloud outside the nucleus. So today we're going to talk about the Bohr model, which is basically just a way to create a visual representation of the atom of an element. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. All right, so again, here is that just visual representation of an atom. So in the middle with this red, we've got those positively charged protons and those neutral neutrons. And then, of course, we have our electrons in the cloud outside the nucleus. So we've talked about protons and neutrons. Now let's talk about electrons. So we're going to focus on electrons and how they are arranged outside of the nucleus of the atom. So what we're talking about today is a Bohr model. So this is actually a picture you see on the screen on the right hand side. So this is going to be a visual representation of the atom. So something that's a little bit more specific to the electrons and how they move. So if you look at this image on the in the middle, of course that's our nucleus, those green and those blue um, particles, those are our protons and our neutrons, and then the electrons are in the shells or the energy rings on the outside, and we're going to be talking about those today. So the Bohr model tells us that the electrons exist in specific energy levels. They only exist at these levels and not in between, and we call these energy levels the shells. So these circles that we see right here with these electrons moving around, those are the energy shells. Now, if you need to know how many shells that an element is going to have, you need to look at the period on the periodic table, okay? So when you look at the periodic table, let's say that the element is in period three. So it just means it's in row three. Remember, our periods are the horizontal rows that go from left to right. So if you have an element in period three, that means it's going to have three of these rings. Okay, that's it. So the energy level corresponds um, to the period that the element is located in. Okay. And then just a reminder, we've got our protons in the middle, our neutrons in the middle as well, and our nucleus. And then our electrons, which are negatively charged, exist in these energy shells outside. Okay, um, I'm going to say this over and over <laughs> until we get it. So we need to know the positive protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus. The electrons are outside in the energy shells. So when we talk about the energy shells, we can use a basketball court or a basketball game kind of as an example. So here we have in the middle our protons and our neutrons, of course. So if we're looking at this basketball stadium as if it were an atom. So we're just making an analogy here. So we've got in the court our players are going to be our protons and our neutrons. And then in our stands, this is where you're going to have your electrons, okay? And we use this kind of basketball court analogy to talk about the energy of the electrons because the energy of these electrons will change depending on which energy level they are. So whether or not they have low energy or high energy will be dependent on the shell that they're located in. So these floor seats are going to be like that first energy shell, like the VIP seats. And we're relating this to like rich, bougie people. So there's a picture here of Rihanna. She's at this game. And now if you ever watch a basketball game and you notice like the super rich people that are in the center, they don't seem like they're really, really care to be there, right? So like they're there to watch the game, of course, but you know, they're dressed up. Other people are paying attention to them. People are taking their pictures. They sit at the level and they're not like up out of their seats, like screaming because it's not really, you know, necessarily a once in a lifetime event for them. They're rich, they can go whenever they want to, they're really there for other people to see them, to take in what they're wearing, etc. Then we have our lower seats. These are regular numbers of people. They have some energy but not a lot. So maybe these are people that go to games often. Maybe they have like season passes, so they come, they're excited to be there, they're cheering a little bit, they have some energy. 
But when we get out into the nosebleeds or the upper seats, these are going to be the cheapest seats. Probably people that maybe have saved up a bunch of money to go to this one game and they're super hype about it. They're so excited to be there. They're screaming from their seats. Same thing with the electrons. So as you get into the outer energy shells, just like the upper seats, those electrons are going to have way more energy. So the closer they are to the nucleus, the less energy they'll have. And then as they get further away, the more energy they'll have. Okay. So we need to know how to draw these Bohr models. And there's a certain, uh, certain information we need to know before we can do this. First of all, we need to understand that electrons will fill the shells nearest to the nucleus first. Okay, so when we figure out how many electrons we need, we have to start from the inside and make our way out. So the inner rings get filled first, and then we fill those shells on the outside. So our lowest energy level is going to be our ground state. So this is going to be the first energy level. It's the one that's closest to the nucleus, and it holds the least amount of electrons. So when we're drawing these, only two can go in the middle or in that first ring. Okay, so the first ring only gets two electrons. Then they move to fill the next energy level, so the second one, and they will completely fill it before moving on to the third. So the second through seventh energy levels, those are in an excited state. So this means those electrons have more energy. They've been excited. They are moving around. They have just more energy in those states. They're further away from the nucleus, and they hold more electrons. So the further away you move from the nucleus, the more electrons it holds. So if we're taking a look um, at the rings in the outer shells, the energy is going to increase. So the further you move away, the more energy those electrons have. Now each energy holds a specific number of electrons, and these are the number of electrons per energy level. For us, we're not really going to go above eight per shell, okay? Um, but these are the number of electrons that can be held. So our first energy level can hold two. Our second can hold eight. Our third can hold eight. Our fourth and fifth can hold up to 18. Oops, sorry. Our sixth can hold 32 and our seventh can hold 32. So that's how many electrons can be held in each energy level. Now remember they fill before moving on to the first one. So like, let's say that we have um, an element with 16 electrons. If they have 16, two of them will go in the first shell before filling the second. So two will go into the first shell, then eight will go into the second, and then the remaining six will then fill into the third because you have to fill the lower levels before you go to the upper levels, okay? So how do we figure out how many electrons go into the Bohr model, okay? We are going to assume for our practice today that we are dealing with neutral atoms, so atoms that have the same number of electrons that they do protons. So to draw the Bohr model of an atom, you have to first look at its atomic number. So we're going to be using our periodic table. So we'll take a look at our periodic table, determine the number of protons, because remember A is equal to P is equal to E in a neutral atom. So the atomic number will be equal to the protons, will be equal to the electrons. Okay, so that means if we want to know how many electrons are going in these energy levels, we just have to look at the atomic number for now. Remember, when you're filling these energy shells, the first energy shell gets two, and then as we go up, they'll get eight. Okay, so the first energy shell gets two electrons, then the second one we will start to fill with eight. Okay, and for your assignment today, I'll post a video that um, shows you how to do a couple of examples as well. So what happens when electrons move from one energy level to another? This is called absorption, and this happens when energy jumps to a higher level. So this requires an absorption of energy, and when this happens, this will reflect a specific series of light. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about the electromagnetic spectrum um, a little bit later. So let's say 
the electrons get excited. So they move from a low energy level to a higher energy level. Well, eventually they're going to come back down. So they'll go from those high energy levels and they'll come down, and this is called emission. So it's absorption if the electrons are moving up in their energy levels, and it's emission when they jump back down. When this happens, it releases and emits energy. Okay, so energy is released, and this will reflect, um, the energy that's reflected is in the form of light. So either infrared light, UV, or in the visible spectrum. So we can actually see it with the naked eye depending on the color that it is. And we'll talk about that more a little bit later as well. Okay. Now, this is the last slide for today. This is a video that's embedded in your slideshow, so I do encourage you to watch it. I'm going to do some examples in your assignment, so when you pull up your assignment, there'll be a video of me working some of these problems. Um, but this is also an example of how to draw a Bohr model, um, which is what we are practicing with today. And, of course, the first thing you want to do before you start is, number one, determine your number of protons, your number of neutrons, and your electrons in your nucleus, okay? Because we have to know our atomic number before we can figure out our number of electrons. Okay. All right, and that is it for Bohr models. Um, remember, the biggest thing when you're drawing them and doing your practice is that you need to figure out the atomic number, which will come from a periodic table. You can pull up p-table, where you can find a PDF version online. You need to then draw your rings. So we need to figure out how many rings there will be. The rings are determined by the period that the element is in. So if it's in row three, that's period three, it will have three energy rings. Then you can fill your electrons in the shells. Remember the first shell gets two. You have to fill that up before moving on to the second shell, which gets eight. You have to fill that before moving on to the third shell, which also gets eight, and go from there. Okay, that's it for today, and if you need help or have questions, let me know, and if not, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye, guys, and have a great day.